Hey guys, welcome back to Home Built, and in this episode, we are going to continue on with the bodywork on the Al Ferrari. All right, guys, welcome back. And those of you watching previously will have seen that uh, last week I started smoothing in the bumper mounts on the front of the Alfa Ferrari. If you missed it, I'll put a link up above so you can catch up and uh, think about subscribing. It does help us out. So um, yes, there were some people who said that they uh, much prefer these things with bumpers. I personally don't. I don't. I like the look of it without the bumper. Um, as I said, I looked at a bunch of different options and uh, I like the rectangular head, the uh, indicators better than some of the other alternatives that I've seen. So uh, I'm happy to keep that the way it is. Um, I'm really enjoying this new method of uh, panel beating and uh, I want to spend a bit more time today getting everything just right. So this panel I got okay last week but it's still not perfect. It's still, I can feel these ripples. There's a low here and a high. So it's gonna be a matter of going through and getting this perfectly smooth and flat. And uh, I'm gonna take you along the road with us uh, and just showing that you could, I could leave it like this and just body fill it. And it would actually not use very much filler at all, but um, a bit more time would mean a lot less filler. Now, this is still going to need filler on, no matter how smooth you get it, you're still good to put just a, a skim of filler over it, just to get it 100% perfect. But um, this here um, is, is really good. There was also more talk of using lead filler. Now, I might actually use lead on a couple of the seams on this car a bit later, but uh, generally, lead filler, they stopped using it because... It's an inferior product. It's heavy, it's hard to work, and it's uh, it's just, it's not very good. I know a lot of people like using it because of the old school thing and stuff like that. It's actually worse. There's a reason why they moved to lightweight body filler, because it's lighter, easier to work, and better than what the lead filler is. So um, yeah, it, there's, there's no huge benefit of using lead, um, or actually in the current form, it's not even lead, it's some sort of soft metal, but I'm not sure exactly what it is. Anyway, we're gonna keep working on this as it is now and um, just uh, move forward. All right, that is pretty good now. I'm quite happy with that. Um, look, you could keep going and going and get rid of every tiny little bit, keep uh, grinding it back and getting, having to work on both sides because obviously um, any lump on the back side when you're trying to hit it out is also going to create lumps on the front side. So it's, it's I am quite happy with that. That's going to take a tiny little skim to uh, finish it up. And um, I think it's time to move on to the other side. So we have uh, one side done. Time to do the same thing again on the other side. So let's cut it out and uh, then we need to start making our patch panel. So you saw here that I've uh, just quickly cut out uh, a basic shape that is sort of close to what I need. Uh, I'm going to go now onto my stump like I did last week and uh, start hammering this out. Uh, and if you're wondering why I'm tucked away here in the booth, it's because 
all this hammering and banging is so loud, um, I'm trying to be a little bit more tolerant to my neighbors so that they are not completely deafened. It is a, yeah, it's a very, very noisy thing, just banging on a drum all day. So uh, hopefully um, I won't annoy them too much. Uh, and uh, yeah, we've got to, to start hammering this out now and uh, trying to get it to a little bit of a crown on it so that we can start filling in our patch and uh, weld it in. Another thing I'd just like to note is um, last time I actually uh, welded in this, the, the second little hole as a separate thing and it ended up making more headache than I needed. It made this corner more ripply and stuff like that. So I just enlarged the patch to cover both. Um, so uh, let's start hammering this out. So you can see here, I've uh, got a whole bunch of little dents in this that I've just uh, hammered in, but I've got my compound curve over this panel. It's quite, uh, quite a curve. It's probably a bit more than what I need. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to, uh, like I did last week, go over to the dolly in the vise and, um, and just start tapering this out, sort of flattening it out, getting, just, just playing with it, getting it to the, the exact shape that I want. And that's just a matter of working it uh, and, uh, and smoothing it into what I need. So again, as I showed you last week, uh, using the air, air chisel with a, uh, with a hammer bit in the end of it, this really makes a, a big difference to being able to smooth out this panel. And you can see it's still got a little bit of ripples in it, but um, it's a lot smoother than it was. So you've got this nice little curve, which is gonna be just what I need to sort of tweak. And uh, now we're gonna go over to the car, mark it out, uh, through the hole from behind with a uh, with a texture and then cut it out with the uh, with the snips until I get it night get it reasonably close then we'll do the uh, the same thing as we did last week of tack trim tack trim all the way around to get a nice smooth flat finish Right, so um, same again, what I've gone through and done here is I've, I initially tacked the whole P panel over the top of where I wanted it. Uh, then I've gone through and trimmed through each tack and cut this um, panel on a 45 degrees uh, angle as I went round and that way, and then tacked again so that I've got this a nice flush finish. Now, I'm gonna go over it with the grinder now, knock the tops off all these welds, and then I'm gonna TIG the whole thing up uh, to get a nice even uh, join all the way around. So you can see here that uh, I have a reasonably uh, flat weld. Uh, some bits it got quite thin and I blew holes and I had to fill them up so that's uh, made it a little bit uglier. It's a little bit warped but uh, basically as you saw all I did was I went, uh, I welded an inch and then I got the uh, dolly behind the hammer and tapped it out and then an inch and, and it and it's really hasn't warped very much at all. It's quite good. So now I'm going to go through, I'm going to uh, grind back the top of all these welds and then uh, we'll get out with the uh, slapper file and the hammer and dolly and we'll just make it all nice and flat and smooth. Okay, so I've been working away on this, uh, getting it's just perfectly flat. The bulk of it is there. There's just a little bit, particularly in this top area where it's hard to get in behind. Um, and there's a bit of too much metal here, so I was trying to shrink it. And uh, I actually tried another thing that I've had, I 
bought a while ago and haven't actually tried yet, which is a shrinking disc. So this is just a flat metal disc that uh, mounts onto angle grinder. And uh, basically you just, you just sit it flat on the panel where you want. And because it will sit on any high spots, it'll heat them up, leaving any low spots. And uh, in focuses the heat where you, where you want to heat up and that heating up and cooling down can shrink that uh, panel back in. The only issue is, is that um, the backing plate disintegrated on it while I was using it, um, causing it to flick off and smash me in the chest and then flick up and get me uh, in <laughs> up here in my eye because I was an idiot and didn't have my face shield down when I was using it. So, um, Always use your protective gear. Don't be a moron like me. So anyway, we're going to continue going here. I don't know what I'm going to do with this. I might have to uh, make up some sort of uh, space or something to get this to still function the way I want it to. And um, for now, we're going to uh, continue trying to shrink this area and, uh, and try and get this nice and flat and smooth. Okay, so now that is a nice smooth patch. I'm quite happy with that. Took a little bit of uh, shrinking and stuff up in this corner here. I had a little bit of oil canning, um, which I no longer have. Um, for those who haven't seen it in the past, uh, the way I do my heat shrinking, I like to use this, particularly seeing as that uh, shrinking disc exploded in my face. Bit of map gas, just heat an area, and you can actually physically watch it bubble up like an egg. And then, um, I then like to use uh, my file, my bumping file. This is just an old file that I bent. And uh, basically what this does is I try and sort of drag the metal into the center of the hill and sort of knock that hill down by dragging the metal into the center. And it sort of, it, it literally grabs the metal and pushes it together so that it actually um, compresses. And then when it dries out, it pulls and it, and it cools and it pulls and, it, and that actually shrinks the metal. So, um, that worked quite well, and this is really nice and smooth now. Like there's tiny little divots in, in you can see sort of around some of the welds, and I could keep going for another few hours and get rid of that completely, but uh, that is more than good enough. This is gonna take the tiniest skim of filler over it just to get rid of those tiny little lows. Quite happy with that. So uh, the next thing I need to tackle is, uh, how am I going to remount the bumpers if I am going to do that? So last week, many of you said it's gonna be very difficult to mount bumpers when I've covered up those spots. And I wanted to get rid of those, uh, the, the indentations, but I still am gonna reinstall my mount, bumper mount. So these are the bits that I cut off the end of this bracket here. You can just see where it was. I'm going to weld on the end again and leave the hole in it. And I'm gonna drill a hole through the front, but just a small hole at the front so that I've got access to the, uh, the bumper mount still. And I can put a little stand off through there or something like that to uh, actually hold it if I do choose to mount the bumpers or if I'm forced to mount the bumpers for some reason. Um, I will have that option. So that's what I'm going to do for the time being. I've actually decided that um, if it comes to it and I need to, I might actually drill the holes through um, if I need to fit the bumpers and I'll make up the standoffs and stuff then. Um, essentially, I'm not gonna be running bumpers on this car. So if I do have to do that, I'll probably make some little, um, some the standoffs to hold the bumpers temporarily, but then I'll actually make some sort of plugs that uh, will be painted and fit in there nicely and just uh, hide it. But for the time being, I'm happy to leave it. I'm probably not gonna have to bother about it, so uh, I'll leave them off. So uh, that is the front end looking good.
All right, so we've finished up with the front, so it's now time to just work around and finish off the last little bits of rust. And as you can see here, this is uh, just in front of the front door. Uh, there's, a, uh, there's a bit of a rust hole sort of patch right here and some uh, and another spot of rust holes there. This I'm just going to fill with the MIG. I'm not going to cut it out and make a, uh, uh, a mountain out of a molehill. I'm just going to get my uh, brass rod. I'm going to stick it in behind and then give it something to back against and then just zip it up with the MIG. Grind it flat. Should be nice and quick and easy. All right, well, we've got the front smoothed out now and um, I've gone around and done most of the little rust pieces. There's one more um, semi-major rust repair on the surround of the rear window, which I'm gonna have to tackle next time. Um, but that is definitely all the time I have this week. So I think it means it's time for Fun Facts with Mrs. Jeff. Hey guys, so we're continuing on from the Dino 206S that we talked about last week. And this car spawned some interesting prototypes. The first of which came in 1965 with the first Dino badged concept car for the Dino Bellinetta Speciale. The car was built on a competition tubular chassis with a longitudinally mid-mounted V6. The design consisted of a very streamlined body with prominent wheel arches and low mounted headlights which were covered in plexiglass. The elongated side air intakes ducted air to the rear brakes, kind of like gills. But my favorite part is that the seats were fixed with a pedal box that could be moved to suit the driver. The other interesting concept came in 1967 with the Dino Berlinetta Competizione, which was designed at Pininfarina and brought interesting race concepts such as rear and front wings. The design also concentrated on weight saving and when it was presented at the Frankfurt Motor Show it received a lot of interest and a lot of requests. It was not put into production though as at the time it would surely have been in threat to the entire commercial strategy of the Dino line being Ferrari's entry level. All right, we're getting there. I mean, a lot of this bodywork to do it well is very, very time consuming and takes a lot of time, but I'm quite happy with how smooth that came out. And uh, yeah, it's uh, one of the better patches that I've done. So we're moving through next week. Obviously I've got to tackle the rear end and uh, I might actually finally have some mufflers. So uh, <laughs> did you, did they see you get hit in the face? They did not. Right. I did mention that, uh, yes. Cause he wasn't wearing safety glasses. My, my, she, he, shield was actually on my head and up at the time <laughs> and uh, I uh, yeah so just, I just stupid again so yeah you know like I know a lot of viewers write in and say Jeff you should be wearing your safety glasses and all that and, like, and I usually I'm really good I just I, I don't know what I was thinking and why I didn't have my face shield down at the time and mm. uh, do you know what it's like I paid for it it's like those people who walk around with a mask on the chin. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> it's like it's kind of there. Mm. <laughs> anyway, sorry, I yes. digress. Um, like and subscribe if you haven't, if you want to see the videos a day early without ads and support Jeff on his uh, body mutilation <laughs> crusade. <laughs> Join Patreon. <laughs> yes. Yeah. There, all right, guys. And uh, yeah, we'll see you on the next one. <laughs> see ya. The, the design consisted. Design. With prominent wheel arches and low mounted, yeah, what are they? Headlights, that's right. The design consisted of a very streamlined body. Yeah. To Ferrari's entire commercial line being the Dino entry level. No. No, that doesn't make any sense. No, it does not. So Snailed it. You snailed it. <laughs> <laughs> Can't believe I laugh at that. 